All right. Well, thanks guys for being here. I usually there's not too many people that come to these info sessions, but it's nice because I can record them um, and then share them with others. And it's great for you guys all to be here because you can ask specific questions and get your questions answered. Um, so what I will do, I'm going to uh, share my screen. Screen one, share. And can you see a PowerPoint there? that I just brought over? Yes. Okay, and um, you can just, Judy, I can see you if you just wanna go thumbs up or thumbs down. <laughs> Great, and welcome Lucinda, I see you're here too. Um, so what I mainly wanted to do today was go over the assignment, but we can really open this up to any questions um, that you might have so going forward. And if this is something that really works out well and is helpful, we could actually do this every week. Um, I don't mind at all. I think sometimes a video is worth a million words. So um, uh, what I wanted to do quickly is just, um, I was looking at some of the answers to uh, the discussion last week um, and looking at some of the, um, yeah, it was just the discussion and just wanted to make sure that you were clear with dis what the difference between descriptive statistics is and inferential uh, statistics. So inferential is exactly what it sounds like. You're um, looking at um, a sample of a population and then you're saying, well, because we looked at this in this sample, we're gonna say that um, the, the population has this same feature here. So descriptive statistics will just go in and they'll tell you about the participants in your sample. Um, it's not testing anything, um, any hypotheses or anything. So I just had an example here. So if you had a hundred people in your, um, in a study that you were doing, and they were, um, 26 of them had diabetes. Just describing that is descriptive statistics. Um, so for in inferential statistics, you would say, uh, well, because in this sample, we had 26 people with diabetes, that's 26%, we're gonna say that in the population, 26% of the US population has diabetes. So that's just some examples there. That's we're inferring from um, that one study um, information and we're applying it to the general population. Um, so of course this number 100 here would be, it would have to be a lot bigger for us to say that we're gonna infer this to the whole uh, uh, population. But I just wanted to use that example there. Okay. <laughs> I think you were signed in twice, listen to yeah, so that's why I we got it. Okay. I was having trouble on my computer. Go ahead. Okay. Any questions about that? Descriptive or inferential statistics? Last week we just kind of went over uh, descriptive and we will go over inferential next week or the week after, something like that but just some people had it a little bit um, mixed up. So I wanted to make sure that I clarified that. Can you just repeat in short, in a short extent maybe? Because I missed that whole part. Um, well, I'm gonna share these slides with you too. So um, uh, descriptive statistics is really when you're um, just describing, as they say, the, um, the population, the sample that you have, how many are men, what percent are women, how many have, um, you know, uh, education, a graduate education? So you're just giving all these um, information about the sample that you have. Inferential statistics is where you take in, um, this information that you've gathered on your sample and you apply it to the larger population. So you're predicting out. Right. Okay. Or inferring. Inferring. All right, so let's go to um, let's go to Canvas, and I'm going to go to the assignment. And this is my view, how I see it. So you, your view might look a little bit different. 
but we should all have this uh, right here, this um, week six learning activity. All right, so we've got the groups. A lot of you asked, how come you put us in groups by topic? And I'm sorry I didn't explain that, but that was just in case your group wanted to choose other articles other than the ones that I have here. Um, so if you do choose a different article, just make sure you um, send it to me so I can make sure that you do have a observational, one observational study and one interventional study. Um, so what I want you to do is look at um, two studies. One of those is going to be an observational, non-experimental, descriptive study. And the other one's going to be an interventional study or an experimental study. Uh, if you click on these hyperlinks, they go to a Kaiser Permanente uh, website about nursing, um, nursing research. And you just have to make sure your Adobe Flash is working. And then you, has anyone had any trouble getting into those? Okay. All right, so then what I want you to do is present. There's really two parts to the assignment. Um, uh, one part is you're presenting information, and then the second part is you're going to critique the article. So really what I'd recommend that you do for um, this assignment, and hopefully you've started on this already, is review the, the instructions, uh, choose your articles, make sure the group's all, all on board with the two articles that you're going to review. Uh, re View the critique guide, which is on page 102 of Paulette and Beck. And then discuss in your group how you are going to do this project. Um, what form do you want it to be in? Do you want it to be in a PowerPoint? Do you want to write a paper? Uh, do you want to do Google Slides with embedded videos in it? So just discuss, uh, discuss um, those options. And then because there's two parts here, right? So there's presenting the article and kind of that um, uh, IMRAD format that we did before the IMRD, the information methods, uh, results and discussion, um, which we did two or three weeks back. So do you wanna present your article first and then critique it or do you wanna present and critique at the same time. So um, then after you decide on this, you should really look at a timeline, say, okay, you know, we're good. We want uh, all, all of us should submit our parts on Wednesday, um, feedback on Thursday, you know, whatever, something, whatever you guys can all agree on together. Um, then you'll submit your assignment in Canvas. And then there's also a group feedback form. So the group feedback form asks how you like the project, how you guys work well together, and then contributions of group members. So you'll list each member in your group there. You'll only have three and you'll rate them there. So um, that rating can um, affect your grade. So um, just make sure if your you know, group uh, one of your group members has actually been emailing you and trying to get in touch with you that you're communicating back with this group member and saying, hey, you know, I, I'm busy, to, but I can get back to you in a couple of days. So really, um, the success of you know, group projects really rely heavily on communication. And I think that's true is when you're going to be out there as advanced practice nurses as well. Very important um, to communicate. Okay, any questions thus far? Oh, I have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, so I noticed when you broke down the group assignments that you put us in categories and our specific category said pain slash addiction. And we're trying to figure out what that has to do with these articles here. Right, that's what I just said a few minutes ago that if you guys want to pick some articles that aren't the ones that I suggested and you want them to be something that you guys are more interested in, then you can go ahead and do that. Okay. So I just thought it was getting, you know, if you didn't want to use these, these articles, you guys all were interested in, you know, the op opioid crisis, then maybe you would want to do an article on that. Okay, gotcha. 
and I apologize again for not um, saying that up front. I guess I missed that part. <laughs> um, the other question is, how do you suggest that we communicate? Because I think in our group, um, uh, the way it's organized, we didn't meet first to discuss how it was going to be divvied up. And that was a bit of a challenge for us. And then so people are throwing in their parts, but, but we haven't really all collaborated together before we distributed them and kind of came to some sort of an agreement. It's kind well, of that, that's really up to you. You know, I, I, each group is going to be different and have different um, nuances, different availability, communication styles. Um, yeah. I think... Uh, you know, if you guys text, if you want to do a phone call, if you want to communicate using a Google Doc, you can do it that way. Okay. Is it okay to use the Google Slides for both articles? To yeah, present yeah. Articles? Uh, let me just, um, you're asking a lot of great questions that are segueing into what I'm going to go through next. So well, I'll do that. And then um, thank you for those questions. I'll, I'll just see if um, I feel like a I'm up here like Donald Trump. Thank you for these questions. <laughs> um, but let me go through these and then I will, um, we'll see if there's any other questions, okay? So what I was thinking might be the best would be for you guys to have a Google Doc that you could all write on. Um, just to get started. So you would put table 5.2 here. And then I just used an example. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to share, sorry for jumping around. I'm going to share these slides all with you. And if you click on this box 5.2, it'll take you to a Google Doc. And I think I have to present. And then I can click on that. will take us to a Google Doc where I've started um, copying um, 5.2 into this uh, Google Doc here. I haven't done the whole thing, but I, you know, I think you guys can do a little bit of this yourself too. So what I thought, this, this might be a great way for you to um, look at all the components of um, the assignment and maybe you can actually put on here like you can do insert comment and just say for example you know Judy this is your section so you can make comments right in the Google Doc if I was gonna wanted to send this to Judy I'd do press that and then say Judy and Judy's name would come up and then I'll actually do this so Judy you're gonna get an email so this is going to send, it's going to let me know that Judy doesn't have access to the file. So this will give her access with, to the file and I can say she edit it. And then that's going to, that's a way that you can tag people on your document and send them um, co your comments on the documents. So that's one way you can communicate. Um, but I also think this is a pretty good area where you can say, okay, um, you can get all your information in one place and then you can decide actually how you want to present it in what format. So let me escape out of my PowerPoint. Um, so one way that you could do this is you could say, okay, you could do a PowerPoint and if I um, in within the PowerPoint, you can say, okay, well, the, the, the first part of the critique is it's the title and it says, ask you, is the title a good one? Is it succinctly suggesting key variables in the study population? So if I was presenting this, I would say, well, let's look at this title. It has 29 words, so maybe that's not very succinct. So say maybe one critique would be the title would be a little long. Um, it was, it's very comprehensive. 
and the title does provide the methods. It says that it's a randomized control trial. Um, it tells me the key variables. Um, so I've got that they're going to be testing the impact of Project Dulce and short-term mobile technology. And the dependent variable they're going to look at is glycemic control. And it also gives me the uh, population that they're going to be in. Um, so that, that could be one way where you had a presentation. I put animation in here, but every time I, um, when I go to present this, it goes into presenter mode on here. I'm not sure that you can actually see it on here. But anyways, I, you can have these animated and fly in and fly out if you like doing all that fancy kind of stuff. Um, another thing what you can do is you can put in, um, you can narrate your slides or you can embed videos. So if I go on this, So just an example, I just made that up really quick this evening, just to put something in there. And the way I did that, I just got my, my phone and I hit video and then I emailed myself the video and then it was, um, a, then I could go up here to insert and I could insert video and I went to, video on my PC and I just cleared my downloads so it won't be there but it, it was there before in my downloads and so I could just click on that and then it just <clears throat> went right to there. Um, so you, that's another way you can do that. You can do that with Google Slides too where you can embed your videos right into the slides there. So that's just another option. You can, you know, this was a um, here. If you go to insert, when you're in a slide, you can do a screenshot and it, it will let you do um, a screen clipping if you want. And you can just say, you know, select a certain amount, a certain portion there, and it takes a picture of it and puts it into your slides. You guys already know how to do all this. But um, you can take, take pictures of things, put them in your slides. Um, what I did is I just took a picture of the abstract of the article that I'm using as an exemplar for this and stuck it in there. So for the critique for the abstract, I'm looking at my textbook. It says, did the abstract, oh, I have it down here too in the notes. Did the abstract clearly and concisely summarize the main features of the report? Did it have the problem, methods, result, and conclusion? So I could go through here and I could highlight the, how it says the problem, how diabetes is a problem there. It says um, the methods, it tells me um, the sample in here. And one thing I might critique about this is it really doesn't say that it's a quantitative experimental randomly controlled trial, it just says, uh, there's random assigned. So I, that might be one thing that I critique in there that, um, you know, it didn't, it didn't clearly identify the method there. It clearly said the results of the three groups that it um, compared. It gave the p-values in there and it gave a strong conclusion. So that's how you could do something like that. Um, Another thing it asks in, in the methods is protection of human rights. So you might just get your PDF and uh, if you have a hot PDF, you can make little notes on it and highlight it and then you can pop it into your, um, pop it right into this part here and say, yes, it did. Um, there were appropriate procedures used to safeguard the rights of study participants. They went to the um, IRB of the um, of Mexico, which is the National Research Commission. So it was. It looks like it actually 
the protection of human rights were adequately considered and, um, and met in this. So that's, you can do PowerPoint like that. You can go to um, actually write this out all in a paper. And then if you write it out in a paper, um, so for example, the introduction, say this was a section that was assigned to me, I could put my answer right here in this section, and then this I could just cut and paste into a document there. So um, I answered each one of these problems in a narrative form over here. So that if you wanna write a paper, you can just go through uh, box uh, 5.2 and you can, um, introduce each, each section of the paper and then you can critique it in a paragraph right under it or something like that so those are kind of options i think um the best way probably is to get kind of um a table like this where you each can fill in your component make sure that they're all done mm -hmm. and then it's just a cut and paste into whatever format that you're going to use Um, I think that's really all I have about this assignment. Um, what kind of questions might you guys have? Clear as mud? Uh, I have a question. Since Go ahead. We, since we have two articles one experimental and the other one non-experimental so does that mean we actually have to send four one is the following the guidelines of what we're supposed to answer to the to the study and the other portion critique so right each so each each one you should present each article a little some a little bit about it like in in the imrad format yes and then critique the article okay and can we pre okay my suggestion just from what you you've been uh, sharing if we decided to do a PowerPoint can we do footnotes against each power each PowerPoint as a critique you mean put them down here in the notes or the footnotes to be okay so in the speaker notes section yes yes could that be okay for the critiquing portion, depending on each slide? Um, you, can, you can put the questions down there, um, but really what you should do is, um, if you're gonna do a PowerPoint presentation, you, sh you should present it, right? A power, so you should have some embedded videos in it. Okay. So, um, you you don't have to, but you sh you know PowerPoints are really just for um, presenting. They're really not a, they don't represent all the material because you're supposed to be the, each slide is supposed to just have bullet points that are supposed to represent what you're going to say when you're talking. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I would prefer if you would do something like this where you would. In, um, that's a great picture of me, <laughs> um, where you would actually put, put in an embedded video. Um, and you have to do that again at the end of the class. So it's good to learn that now. Okay. Because it, it would be hard for you to get all that information into um, uh, the, a few slides. So in this particular video, embedded video of you, are you highlight? Are you talking about the highlighted yellow portions? On this. Um, no, you know I had used this study for something before, and that's why I had those those things highlighted. But I would recommend that you do that, so um, you can you can highlight um, the sections that are important. I'm just gonna plug in my computer right now.
But yeah, Judy, that's a great idea to, you know, to highlight what you're going to be talking about and that can cue you in there. But really, you know, this is an example here of what a PowerPoint should look like. I mean, PowerPoint should never have full sentences in them because you really want to um, reduce the number of words that are on each slide. Um, if you just have um, a narrative up there, it's going to be hard for you to actually be, um, somebody will want to be reading the whole slide while you're supposed to be talking about the slide. So um, really, these are just, uh, if you watch like anything like TED Talks and things like that, you know, they don't even have words up there. They just have pictures. Um, so I, I, I have an idea. So if like we broke down the paper into its, into its IRAD, am I saying the right IRAD? Mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> we start with the title, like how it's presented here, rather than having like one whole slide format breaking down the paper and then another whole slide format critiquing um, the article, if we did it in combination here where we put say the title over here, maybe a picture of the title, how it's presented, a couple things right here, you know, bullet points, and then an embedded video of us talking about how the type, you know, critiquing the title in that particular slide. So it's all on one slide with that. That, that would work. That's kind of what I did with this one here is where, you know, I took a picture of that and I had the um, talked about the abstract, um, but also then critiqued it as well. So I think, uh, oh, Cynthia, that's a that's a great idea because you it would kind of be duplicative work if you you know went and you presented the title, but then later on you go back and you critique the title. You know, then you have to say the title again. So yeah, for each each section, yeah, right. Yeah. So if we maybe broke it down that way and we divvied up the slides that way and the portions in the IRAM style, maybe that yeah. would Yeah, and if you go to that um, Google Doc here, you know, you can, you can break it up there um, and see, you know, if you cut and paste, well, you just have to, I guess, type it out because there's nowhere to cut the table 5.2 and pop it into here. I've started um, just typing it in there. Um, but when you look at this, you can really see each section is not created equal. Like the mm -hmm. abstract is just a very little amount of work to critique, right. where the statement of the problem is quite a bit. Right. So I think, um, and within each of the um, boxes of 5.2, it takes you to another more detailed critique. Um, I think think, let me just grab my book. So for example, they'll have um, the literature review and it'll tell you, you know, go to page 113 um, for a more detailed um, critique way to critique the literature review. Um, you can do that if you have questions, but I really think um, as a master prepared nurse, uh, you know, I th think you need to know how to generally critique an article. I don't think you have to take a deep dive into it. I think that's really when you're gonna get up to writing systematic reviews and um, doing actual evidence-based practice changes when you really have to get in, um, get into that. And that's evidence-based practice change is what they teach DNPs to do. Um, as far as when you're, you know, if you can do a rapid review of a study, like they talk about in the step-by-step -step series articles, I think that's, that's what you need to know and what you should know for this class. Um, so when you go through, I said answer and the rationale, um, you say that is the title a good one? You just put yes there. I mean, that doesn't really show that you've really thought through this whole process. And why is it a good one? Um, so for example, in 
this one here in the statement of the problem, is the problem significant for nursing? Well, tell me why or why not? Um, you know, when I talked about that diabetes technology one, um, that specifically addressed the nursing role in, um, in managing diabetes as a um, diabetes educator and presenting um, um, education to people to, so that they could uh, self-manage their own diabetes. So that's stuff that you can talk about when you're doing your presentation or you can write it out. Right. So if we wrote it out right there, then we'd know what we're going to say when we present it on the little slide. Right. So that's kind of like your script. Like I said in here, I said, um, the problem is stated clearly in the first two paragraphs. The prevalence of diabetes in Hispanics was clearly articulated as well as the difficulty in obtaining glycemic control. Furthermore, the author stated that up to 85% of Mexicans use cell phones. Uh, the article highlighted the success of diabetes education and the nurses, nurses' role. It states that there is a gap in externally validating diabetes education in the Mexican population. So it does, so I'm answering the questions, but I'm not, I'm kind of doing it um, and um, not, not directly answering, but working it into the narrative there. Because so this builds the case for the importance of conducting the study. And so I said the approach used in the study was quantitative. This is appropriate because there's knowledge regarding success of the diabetes education, but not the best ways to deliver the education. I said, this is a good match because randomized control trials generate the highest level of evidence. So that, that one's kind of, kind of a lot in that, that one question right there. And then I looked at the literature review, just looked at the years of the literature review. So um, evaluate all that and say, you know, maybe this um, study is based on kind of some old, older papers and they could have done, looked at some more recent studies. So any other questions? So you're going to be um, giving us the ex this example you're going to be sharing with us um, for, the, for the rest of the class? Say that again? So are you going to be sharing this example um, with us? Um, do you want me to share the study with you? This, because I know you, um, you said something sure. about you to try to share it. So we can yep. use that as an, as an example. I didn't finish it though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I only went down to here. <coughs> Are you going to make me do homework? <laughs> no, I just because it looks. Um, I mean that we can use it as an example. Um, you know, in case we're like, okay, we, if we get lost, is like keep us put us back on track. Sure. Yeah, and I can um, try finishing it up too. Where can we access this five point two um, table? It's on page 102 of Paulette and Beck. No, 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 no. I mean this design that you have right here. Well, I put some of it into the Google Doc. Okay. So if you want to put on the, the rest of it in there, um, everybody has access to this Google Doc. If you mm -hmm. want to use it as just your, um, in just your group, you could go to File, and then make a copy, and then you can say copy of box 5.2 for group one. And then you can say, oops, okay. And then it makes a whole copy of the document. And then you can say share. And then you can share it with the people in your group. And then they'll be the only ones that have access to this specific copy. And you guys can start working on that and you can all write within it. I'll just tell you that um, when you enter the names in here, so if you say Judy is in there and Lucindia, uh, you just want to go there and make sure that they can all edit. Okay. 
and then send you guys will get this <laughs> you can just uh use it or delete it but um oh we're all gonna get that now oh that, yeah, that's well, <laughs> yeah you too will yeah that's helpful but that's i'm gonna add the slides to canvas um that i had up here so these slides and okay uh, within the slide <laughs> This was the hyperlink that went to that original Google Doc 5.2. So just to have a question, so we're going to be doing one of these like um, PowerPoint for each individual, um, for one for the the descriptive and one for the other, correct? Correct. And you Sorry. can put them both. You can. They can both be in one PowerPoint. Okay. You could just have maybe like. I just thought it would might be too long of a PowerPoint and I didn't know if you had like a limit to how many, if it was a PowerPoint, like, is there like a limit to slides that you want to be presented? Why don't we say, um, keep it about 10 minutes per article. Okay. Okay. So not, I didn't really limit the slides. I think each, each, um, box, uh, 5.2 has about, um, maybe there's three, four, five, twenty. Um, so maybe each each slide can have that heading there. Where there'll be one slide for title, one slide for abstract, one slide for introduction. So how long? I'm sorry, I missed that part. Let's say for if you're doing a presentation, um, let's do uh, ten minutes per or. 10 minutes per article so 20 for the total so does that have to go on uh, what's the word yeah. i want the slide presentation where it clicks itself through or in other no. words not like no, would, per slide or one minute per slide no, you can, because some sections are bigger than others, so I won't tell you how many minutes per slide, but just try to keep each article at 10 minutes. Um, Total. So, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. And then, you know, I encourage you to use bullet points and not whole sentences and narratives. Um, put in pictures there. Um, you can use arrows and artwork and things to direct people's attention in there. Um, <coughs> if, if you um, have any questions as you're going through, like, how do you do this or how do you do that? Um, just let me know. I think I've worked a lot more within PowerPoint, but Google Slides are so great because you can have three people looking at the slides at the same time. And you can always convert a Google Slides to um, a Word uh, PowerPoint presentation later, if need be. Is Melody signed in, and we just can't hear her? Um, I'm I'm here. Okay. <laughs> just wondering because you're in our group too. I yeah. Is this um, due still on Wednesday? From Sunday. Um, I think it's due Sunday. Let's Sunday. take a look. Sunday. Sixth, I think. Sunday, the sixth. October sixth. Oh, okay. Yeah, Wednesday, you guys would all be panicked. Doesn't leave much time. No. No. So do you have any um questions about other things in the class or more questions about this assignment or I've heard a little bit about how it can be so frustrating to know, you know, when you go through all the modules, there's a lot of reading and videos to watch. What are the most important things? And I think that's um, when I create a discussion and assignment, I try to get you to go back to those things and use what were, were the most important points there. But um, I can also have these meetings every Monday and record them if that's helpful. And so, I think you know, the I think the recordings are helpful because at least we are able to like group chat and sometimes I think we all have the same questions. 
Right. But, you know, I haven't gotten a lot of text and I do have office hours and there's also a place on here for ask the instructor. So there's mm. lots, lots of ways that I'd really like to encourage you. Look, I haven't gotten anything and ask your instructor. Nobody's emailed me. <laughs> so um, just really encourage you to right on the home page here. You know, I have my office hours. I have my um, my cell phone number there. And just if you do text me, just let me know who you are. Um, so I encourage you to get um, try to contact me in those ways. But we can also do something like this on um, um, is Mondays. I think we could do Mondays at um, it's five thirty your time, right? I think that that would work. And then we can go over what we're going to be doing each week. And if you can't come, that's okay. We can record it. Okay. Sounds good. So is there a way when we're done here that our group can stay on this Zoom? <laughs> I know you have other things that yeah, you Yeah, you know what? I, I'll just um, hang up and you guys should. Um, I think that would work um, if I hang up. No, because if I hang up, it'll um, the, the meeting for all. What I can do is I can just um, walk away and you guys can still talk. Okay. I'll take my headphones out and um, I'll, I'm will i going to stop the sh my sharing and then I'm going to stop recording.